turns out that the fashion industry works in a take-make-waste model. We take from our environment with no hesitation. We make our clothes with very little regard for those who make it. And then, because the clothes hold so little value, we wear it once or twice, and then it's in the garbage. How do we put this in perspective? So if one t-shirt takes 2,700 liters of water to make, and we multiply that by the 116 t-shirts that I have sitting in my closet, that makes around 313,200 liters of water. Okay, great. That sounds like a lot of water, but how much water is that really in human perspective? So if we drink around two liters of water a day, if you're good, that means I have 429 years of possible drinking water in my closet. 2,700 liters of water. That's approximately 700 gallon containers of water just for making one t-shirt. <laughs> Did you know that fashion and textile industry is the second largest polluter of the planet after the oil industry? And majority of those contributions came just in past 20-30 years. Why? Well, because the world got introduced to this fancy term called fast fashion. In today's episode, we are going to understand what does fast fashion mean and what does it mean to shop sustainably? What are its impacts long term and short term? And most importantly, what can we as a consumer start doing today to make sure we are more mindful and sustainable in our practices? Today, I'm in conversation with Gabriel Spitt, the same TED Talk speaker. She's the co-founder and CEO of Upcycle Project. And she's going to explain us everything about fast fashion. What can we do to shop our clothes more sustainably? Gabriel Smith, also known as Gabby, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show and talking to me today. I love the concept of this show so, so much. Thank you for having me and I can't wait to start this conversation. Absolutely. And uh, I would say when I, when I watched your TED talk, you had no idea how deeply I was involved in this whole topic, the sustainable fashion and fast fashion topic. and. At that time, I realized, wow, Gabby has some extraordinary skills of persuasion that you actually made me research on that topic in much in depth. And I'll tell you something in my personal life, uh, I'm a big proponent of minimalism. I like to practice it. But when it comes to my closet, I don't think I do that good of a job. And uh, when I watched that video, when I understood the concept, the, the why behind it, and uh, I genuinely, I mean, even though I felt bad and guilty that I am doing this, but a majority of it was ignorance. And uh, one thing that we want to do with this show is that make people aware of this topic. The effects of it the short term and long term effects of it and hopefully by the end of interview like people feel inspired to make this shift and you know it's not that complicated <laughs> it isn't that complicated at all um i really loved you know doing that ted experience was incredible for a lot of different reasons and i won't get into that yeah but, um <laughs> But I feel like it wasn't really persuasion, it's really passion. Like I'm yes. super passionate about this subject. I've always, always, always loved fashion. I mean, since I was a little girl um, and then through high school, you know, I would like make sure that my belt, my bag and my shoes would match when yeah. that was so cool. <laughs> But, um, but now I'm just like, okay, like why can't fashion do something better? Like why yes. can't we create the whole foods of fashion where, you know, not that whole foods does everything right, mm -hmm. but you know that you could at least go there and find organic products that are, you know, good for the planet and good for the people. So I'm like, why can't fashion do that? That's how everything kind of came about. So Gabby, to start us off here, um, if you have to explain the concept of fast fashion to someone who is extremely unaware of this, uh, how would you put it? Right. So let's start by thinking about fast fashion as inexpensive, inexpensive, trendy clothes 
that is produced very fast for a massive amount of people in the latest trends, right? So that's a lot kind of to take in, right? So fast fashion has been associated with a lot of disposable fashion, mm -hmm. right? And unethical fashion, right? Okay. So if you compare it to fast food, is fast food the most nutritious food that you can eat? Yeah. So fast fashion is literally, literally the fast food of fashion, whereas it has cheap ingredients, so cheap materials. Mm -hmm. It is produced in a way that is not transparent because we don't know who is actually making these clothes. Yeah. And then when you wear it once or twice, then you're done with it because it's just a trendy, inexpensive piece that you mm -hmm. as a customer didn't necessarily value. And so when you have that, then you create another problem that is waste. So mm. all of the fashion that we don't necessarily value that end up in the landfill. Wow. The, the reality is how, how these big brands, massive brands out there, uh, they, they do play with the human psychology. Uh, anytime we get upset, anytime we get sad, uh, we're going to go and shop. It makes us feel good. Dopamine makes us happy. And uh, there are so many people who I, I know personally who are, I would say, in some sense, addicted to shopping because they want to do it. And uh, but there are so many negative implications of that, not just on personally, like I'm just not talking finance, but even like planet and the waste and stuff. Lovely. So, Gabby, if um, you had to explain um, the impact of fast fashion. Uh, what are some long-term and short-term impacts that you foresee? So for instance, in fast fashion is a linear model. So if mm. we look at that, we say, take, make, waste. So we take from where? We take from our environment. We take mm -hmm. resources from the earth. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have non-renewable resources, right? Such as oil and different things, but especially oil and fashion that is responsible for making polyester, a lot of different... Um, wood cellulose that come from trees that don't necessarily get replanted, et cetera. So we're taking all of these renewable and non-renewable resources from the environment to make something that we don't necessarily value. So there's the take, right? So we're taking resources from the environment. Then we make it. Who makes our clothes? This is where we get into the social impact, right? Are you paying fair wages? Are people working under ethical conditions? Mm -hmm. Are people, you know, dying at work? Are they getting sick at work? Um, you have the indigo di uh, the indigo dyers of, of, of denim and the denim industry who have literally blue hands for the rest of their lives, you know? Wow. And it's, it's truly heartbreaking the way that the fashion industry has zero regulations in developing countries because they're essentially providing jobs, mm. but those jobs are not being fair to the people who are, you know, producing the product. Mm. So in the make section of this linear model, we have hundreds of thousands of different types of problems that affect the people who actually make these clothes. And then you have a consumer who, like you said before, is addicted to shopping, who can't get enough t-shirts in their closet, who can't get enough dresses or pants, et cetera. Yeah. And they're not looking at the whole supply chain, right? So there for them is disposable. It's another $10 that they have to, to spend and they rather spend it there, but then they wear it and they throw it away. So then mm -hmm. that has an extra environmental impact that is waste. It's like, I love how people are like, no, I threw it away or I donated it. And I was yeah. like, okay, it's not a magic bag. It's not like Mary Poppins that's at the other end of this, you know, trash shoe, just yeah. making beautiful things. It's like, it's really going to, to our earth. And so how much, how much dirt, I mean, how much garbage can you put into the earth versus when, before we have like a bigger problem? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really, it's really complex. And um, honestly, it doesn't matter what you buy. We can't buy our way into a sustainable future, right? I mean, yes, there are different options, but our conscious needs to change. Our yeah. habits need to, need to shift. And we can't just continue to buy stuff for the sake of buying stuff. And I feel like that's a very cultural thing that we're living here um, at the moment. Lovely, lovely. And uh, as you like, I, I love that you mentioned 
that majority of our big brands in developed nations they are outsourcing majority of these things to developing nations due to the lack of regulations and that is the reason why they are able to do it so cheap if if the way i understand uh, what you just said is that say if i have a 10 dollar t-shirt or something if i just have to split that cost with materials and profit for the company and then when i look at the labor section i mean how much they are going to get and uh, in name of creating jobs uh, probably there are many unethical practices that are being uh, stimulated yes i mean there's a lot of arguments in fashion because when you argue like no they're not being they're not being ethical to those workers and there's people who would argue with you and say well you know what at least they have jobs yeah. like what is it to have a job that is going to kill you you know yeah. like where where you don't know if the building is going to collapse like it did in bangladesh and killed yes. almost 3000 people yes. so you know like having a job that costs your life is not a job is a threat to yourself yeah. so yeah. it is the responsibility of small brands and big brands to know exactly where their products are being produced and there are a million different ways right now mm -hmm. that you can find different um, ways to be transparent So so I think that that's a big thing and as a consumer I feel that you should look for transparency right mm -hmm. in the brands that you buy. So for instance say that you need another t-shirt or another pair of pants whatever it is like and yeah. then you go online and you're like okay I want to buy this and then you look at the materials is this 100% cotton is this natural materials is does this have polyester where does it come from does the brand tell me So if you as a consumer take like three or four steps just before buying it to educate yourself a little mm. bit on the brand and where it's coming from, I feel that that could just lead you to actually not buy the product yeah. or even love the brand even more because you're like, "Oh my god, I didn't know this brand had all these social, you know, social responsibility programs and I didn't know that they use recycled cotton and recycled polyester how cool and then that then it educates you as a consumer mm -hmm. and it like increases your loyalty as a brand lovely i i i love that explanation so much uh so gabby i'll be honest with you and to be realistic there are so many brands out there where i can buy my clothes for cheap like i can get my trek pants say for less than 30 bucks if i want to a lot of people out there have this set of mentality that if i'm getting something cheap i have it uh then why should i do all this research so can you explain what is the bigger picture here uh what are we missing all right so there's no easy answer i think um so if we think about sustainability as as a word and we try to define it I've read that it's something good that you do today for somebody else in the future. Okay. Okay. So when you take a choice to drive an electric car, make the choice to drive mm -hmm. an electric car, you are, you know, getting the benefits of the electric car, but it may not be exactly what you want versus a gasoline run car, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you're making this change because you believe that in the future, other generations will benefit for a better planet, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. So that is the kind of choice that you have to make in fashion, okay. which is very difficult because fashion is so emotional and it's a representation of who you want to be that day or that week or that moment, you see? Yeah. yeah. So when we buy a pair of $30 pants, which may be expensive or not expensive you know mm -hmm. because it also depends on your budget you don't know where it comes from right so knowing where those $30 are going mm -hmm. what those $30 are going to support is really what the key is excellent excellent and uh, yes the key factor here is educating ourselves uh, and once we know how it goes on behind the scenes then we'll be much more uh, mindful of taking decisions ahead of time uh so now i know one area that you are extremely passionate of for is waste management and in in the apparel industry so uh can you shine some light on uh how is this waste management done uh when it comes to large industries uh how do they take care of because the way i understand it from your ted talk itself is uh even though 
say there's a cotton t-shirt but in order to make that cotton t-shirt by cutting and slicing there's so much wastage of cloth that happens uh, and not just that but there are so many i think clothes that are made and then discarded because it doesn't meet the standards right uh, what is your understanding on the waste management when it comes to large industries of course it's a really important question um so for instance if we say that to make a t-shirt it takes 2700 liters of water yeah i just take one t-shirt from the point that where it's getting farmed to the time that it's in your closet right so that water is you know a resource that we can't really take back yeah so you can't make water out of that t-shirt anymore so when we look at all of the resources that it takes to make your clothes you're also taking into consideration the waste around the making of that t-shirt. So mm -hmm. like you very, very well explained, there are trims and different waste that comes from uh, industrial manufacturing. Right. A lot of that um, used to get burned or just thrown into the landfill. There's a lot of brands that burn their unwanted goods, their samples, wow. and that obviously has a very big um, carbon emissions footprint yeah. on on the environment so it's really scary there have been brands that have said they're not going to burn um their their unwanted goods anymore you know like what didn't sell their their post-industrial waste etc but there is light at the end of the tunnel right mm -hmm. so instead of wasting it or burning it um there are there are companies that are recycling these trims for instance the t-shirt that i'm wearing right now and this is our slogan, don't be trashy. Don't be trashy. <laughs> yes, because we want to be resourceful, right? Yes. Our mission is to have to use the resources that we have on Earth already yes. without having to tap into the environment and use them to make a more resourceful world, right? Like we have the power to be as resourceful as we want. Mm -hmm. So we've launched a wholesale t-shirt line for everybody who wants to make their own t-shirt designs, etc of 100% recycled materials. So this is 100% recycled from 50% recycled cotton and 50% recycled polyester, which comes from 4.8 bottles of water. Wow. So, or bottle, plastic bottles, not necessarily yeah, yeah. water. Um, so if you think about this product, why can't we make all the t-shirts from recycled materials, totally. right? Yeah. So the impact would be even greater if all t-shirts could come from recycled materials that could be recyclable. Mm. Okay. So the end of the loop here is not, is not just to have a recycled product. You okay. want that recycled product to then be recycled. So then you have an infinite loop of, you know, goods that go back and forth. Lovely. Lovely. So, That's so, really it the is cradle possible. To cradle. so are you, you, so there's um, William McDonough who is a brilliant man and a sustainability expert he wrote a book called cradle to cradle so okay. he thinks of products as instead of having a product go cradle to grave yeah. you have a product from cradle to cradle which will be means that it's reborn so it's a very beautiful way he's so talented in the way that he he speaks about sustainability nice and, I, and we'll also put it in the video description the link of this book that you are recommending cradle to cradle right yes cradle to cradle yeah and and this is this is lovely because uh, now we have an avenue. I think, as you told me, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We have avenues for uh, waste management in a way that you can take all those waste and now, again, put it back in the fashion industry. And live example is you're wearing it right now and it looks pretty. So Exactly. It's something that you want to wear. It's not yes. this weird thing that you're like, oh, I don't really want to wear that. No, no. Yes. Don't, don't compromise on the style. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean... I would say to our audience, right, you know, if Gabby, the fashion diva, if she approves it, then, then oh my God, we can safely just consider all. that. Uh, excellent. So, so we talked about large industries and uh, waste management, but I think another important and integral part is uh, waste management when it comes to us, uh, the day-to-day -day consumers, right? So if I have to ask you, can you explain uh, how can one go about um, managing their closet more mindfully uh, when it comes to wastage? Uh, so, for example, say I have a T-shirt or even undergarments uh, that I no longer use. They're torn and I can. there's no way I can even stitch it or use it and I want to get rid of it. What do you think are some best practices that we should follow? 
So for instance, if you have clothes that are in good condition, I would donate it to somebody that you know is going to use it. So if you have a younger sister or, you know, somebody who works with you, et cetera, to say, look, I don't want any of this stuff. And do you want it? And they'll say yes, or they'll say no, et cetera. So step number one, people that you know, Hmm. that you know are going to use it. Step number two, I would go and donate it to one of the charities as such as Salvation Army, Goodwill, a thrift shop. You could sell it to a thrift shop depending Mm -hmm. on what on what it is, right? And then step number three, if it's something that you cannot possibly use, then I would still donate it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they will they will actually package it up and and be able to send it to the secondary clothing market or the um, the rags garment. So for instance, everything that's cotton could be downcycled, right? to yes. to uh, rags for the yes. mechanics industry so there is a place for everything um the upcycle project has launched most recently a project called loop, loop. and it's responsible okay. loop yeah and uh it's responsible for just in de- for recycling textiles from very specific industries so we are targeting school uniforms okay uh and hotel linens Okay. which are, you know, textiles that are just a byproduct of them doing what they do best. You know, a hotel, you want clean linens. You don't want yes. dirty ripped linens. But all of those garments, all of them, I'm sorry, all of those textiles don't necessarily get recycled. Yes, they get donated to charities, but the mm-hmm. ones that are not usable, um, they're just getting thrown away or burnt, right? So we want to be able to take that and turn it back into yarn to be able to make the t-shirts that I'm, con- I'm wearing right now. Yes. Yes. Specific to those industries. So as a consumer, I would just say, give it to somebody, you know, donate it to a charity always. <laughs> yes. And uh, the hidden thing I, I know you did not mention and probably a, I want to reiterate, do not throw it to landfill. Don't throw right. it in your garbage yeah. bag. Don't throw it in the garbage bag. It's not a magic hole, you know, like... <laughs> It's just going into a landfill and we really we really don't know how long it will it will disintegrate in there depending on the material so yes yes and uh, there is another angle to it is increasing the life of that clothing material that you have right so if i have to ask you um uh, do you have some like tips and tricks that you know you you might be using in your day-to-day lives to increase the longevity of the clothes that we wear day on day-to-day basis Yes. Well, like the name of the show, it is not that that complicated. (laughs) It just takes effort, right? It just takes a tiny little bit of effort for you to make your clothes last a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So because I've been a fashion lover for a very long time, I found that the dryer, like your dryer, dryer clothes, ruins your clothes. No matter what cycle you put it in, If you just hang dry your clothes, they will last so much longer. Wow. So that's a very easy tip. I mean, then if you have to iron it, so a lot of people are like, yeah, but then I have to iron it and it's all wrinkled and yada, yada. I'm like, okay, then just put it on the low cycle when you're going to wear it. So air dry it. When you're going to wear it, throw it back into it. And just for like two minutes, minutes. try to just, you know, the, the dryer will work its magic and it'll be a little bit more more iron it won't be perfect yeah. but but that's a really simple way to to try to do that i mean it's, i do that and i oh, do that yeah. with my whole family's clothes like nobody <laughs> and goes to their stuff never go in the dryer except for some of the kids clothes that i'm like okay they need it right now excellent excellent and uh, for, for the matter of fact uh, so i grew up back in india and in india it is extremely common i think 90 percent of them will hang dry their clothes in sun uh, there is no concept of dryer at all and i got to know dryers when i came to us um, and i think now back in india everyone is adopting dryers so that is a different story <laughs> um, another thing that i did when i started in this journey of sustainable fashion is that i stopped shopping so for a year i didn't buy anything new um, i i traded clothes with my friends that are super fashionable because like i was I was, I was, I needed that kind of rush um, just to wear something new that I hadn't seen in my closet before. I also invited my cool creative girlfriends to come over and just pick stuff out from the stuff that I already had. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that whole year was so exciting because I knew always that I had something to wear, right? No matter what the occasion was. And so that really helped me kind of shift my mindset into why I was buying clothes. You know, I wasn't buying clothes because I needed it. I wanted to buy clothes for a social, you know, kind of being part of this social group that's in my head because nobody really cares what you're wearing. (laughs) So, so um, that's something that I really recommend. Just take a clothing fast for, you know, a shopping fast for, for a couple of weeks, if you don't want to do a year, but just really like commit to it and, and see what comes up for you. I think that that's really important. Lovely. I love the word, uh, uh, shopping fast that you told uh, in there <laughs> that you know it is necessary to take the shopping fast and don't mean go and shop fast but just <laughs> take a take a break from shopping exactly so, lovely lovely so i think gabby i am completely sold on um why uh sustainable shopping and sustainable fashion is important and why Uh, We should educate ourselves. We should make sure we are aware of things, what we are wearing, how we are wearing, and uh, then take those mindful choices. Uh, So if I have to ask you now, mainly for myself as well as our viewers, uh, are there any fashion brands that are ethical into sustainable fashion already that people can uh, make a shift today if they want to by not going to a fast fashion brand but instead go to a sustainable fashion brand that is more ethical Uh, do you have any recommendations in those brands yes actually we started um this year an ethical closet series on how to build your ethical closet and the idea behind this initiative is really to allow you to discover sustainable brands and get a discount doing it so we've started to create a, um, a directory of brands that will be up on our website, uh, upcycleproject.com. And um, that will show you exactly all of those brands. So for instance, off the top of my head, a t-shirt brand that is made in LA that I love, it's called the Classic T-Shirt Company. Okay. And um, I've worked with them before. Their t-shirts are super high quality. They're 100% cotton and they have a huge commitment to sustainability. Mm-hmm. Uh, for women, because we focus more on women's fashion, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, there are many brands that are focused on sustainability. Stella McCartney being one of the leaders um, of sustainable fashion. Okay. Her price points are, of course, way higher than any fast fashion brand. So if you're looking for more affordable prices, I would go to Reformation. They're very um, transparent with their materials and where the things are made. So Reformation, Stella McCartney. Uh, You know, Prince Charles actually just launched, I read today, a sustainable fashion brand. Oh, wow. Yes. Although it retails for around $725 a shirt, it may not be your first (laughs) choice. That's not something we should want to start with. (laughs) But, you know, I mean, like, sustainable fashion is truly getting traction. And there's a lot of brands incorporating recycled um, materials into into their brands. So... It just takes two seconds of yourself Mm -hmm. to research Research. and see what materials there are. Natural materials are always better than synthetics. I don't care if it's recycled plastic Mm. or recycled polyester. If you can buy a linen shirt versus a polyester shirt, always opt for the linen shirt. 100% cotton is better than 100% polyester. Okay. Always natural materials. If I can. Lovely. And uh, uh, it'll be good for, uh, that, you know, we we'll put these links in the video description so that if anyone wants to go and refer, start researching something, they can do that. But again, the thing is that make sure that you research, make sure you do your homework uh, and uh, f- find your own sweet spot. Uh, if you like some sort of shirt or T-shirt, if you are into some sort of jeans, go and do some research. It is just a one time effort. And then uh, once you have that, it is it just goes on. So do you do know? that the average woman only wears four pairs of jeans out of their closet and they usually have eight. Oh, it's, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. So when I give these workshops, I make the students go and inventory their closet and I'll ask them how many t-shirts that they have and how many jeans they have. And then the next day we'll do a little, um, 
math and we'll say, okay, if it takes 2,700 liters of water to make a t-shirt and you multiply that by the number of t-shirts in your, in your closet, how many liters of water do you have in your closet? And then we kind of correlate that into how many liters of water we need as a human to drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you're, then that really impacts you when you bring it back to you and you're like, what? I have, you know, 300 years of water <laughs> in my closet. Oh my gosh. So, and that is just one closet. And that is just one closet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and, and I think, but uh, it is important to make people aware of these numbers. Uh, how much uh, water does it take to make a cotton t-shirt? How much does it go? And then I, I when I watched your TED talk, uh, I, the, the opening statement on how the number of t-shirts you have and then one t-shirt takes this much water, I was like, oh my goodness. And then the first thing I did was I did my math. I was like, Shh, oh my goodness. <laughs> exactly. And so, so I'll tell you a story. We're building a house now and as a woman, you know, you always kind of grow up and thinking that your closet needs to be this humongous, <laughs> beautiful, like, oh my God, movie thing. <gasps> and now I'm like, I shouldn't have such a big closet. Like I shouldn't buy all this stuff. Like I should get rid of this. But then, you know, it's a struggle. Even yes. for me, it's like, oh my gosh, but I really do want my big closet. And I was like, well, what are you going to put in there? So you have like this, like, <gasps> oh my goodness, this, this whole issue um of what we've grown up to believe is good and what really is good nice once once your closet is done all built up you please share a picture with us so that absolutely not we, we know we know where you landed <laughs> <laughs> exactly i was like oh excellent so gabby coming to the last segment of the show this this show is called it's not that complicated and the whole idea is that we want to talk about things like this make people aware and we want to make sure that uh, we give an inspiring kick to our audience that you know if you want to start practicing it's not that complicated so keeping that in mind if i have to ask you what are some three ctas some three call to actions that you would recommend for our viewers if they want to move towards sustainable fashion ethical shopping and being mindful of their fashion and closet what would you say number one stop shopping mm. take an inventory of what you have okay get rid of the things that no longer serve you donate them give it to your friends etc have your closet have the clothes that you have in your closet make you feel good right if something has a negative energy into it get rid of it Okay, get rid of it responsibly by donating it or giving it to your friends, right? Mm -hmm. So inventory your closet is a really big deal. Then once you've done that, then realize what fashion items you may need, not want, need. And when you go about to shop for those items that you need, then you ask for transparency for the brands that you're buying, mm -hmm. right? You want to know who makes your clothes, where does this clothes come from, okay? You also want to make sure that the materials that you're purchasing are non-toxic materials. Mm -hmm. So you want to stick to natural materials as much as possible and sustainable materials. I think that recycled is always better if you're going to go synthetic. And I think that natural is always better versus synthetic. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Just inventory your closet, ask for transparency for the, from the brands that you really want to buy and get to know them and align them to your values and then just only shop for things that you need not necessarily want lovely that's a very well said call to actions that i think everyone should start implementing today thank you so much gabby for that and it was such a pleasure talking to you today likewise it was such a pleasure thank you for for having me and i can't wait for the show to air and be a huge success because i really feel that it's not that complicated it's going to have a big impact on everybody that's right guys it's not that complicated well if you have stuck around with us for so long i can assure you we are a great match for each other so why don't you go ahead and press that subscribe button every week we come up with an interesting topic just like this and make sure we make it simple for people to understand and if you feel you are a responsible citizen yourself do share this episode with your friends and family members make them aware of what fast fashion is and how can they start adapting such sustainable practices